Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Sumit from Backbench Coder. So this is the last part of our project where I'll be implementing Unsplash API to change our background image. So if you don't know what is Unsplash, Unsplash give you free stock images to use in your app. This is basically the database of images. You can use any of images for free. So we will be using images from this database in our app through an API. So let's try to understand what is an API in a simple way through a diagram. This is a diagram. So this is our app which is our drum kit app and this is our unsplash app which is the third party app so unsplash database and we can connect our app through this unsplash app through an api now through an api we can basically make four types of request so one is get post put and delete so we'll be getting an images from unsplash database and we'll be rendering this in our app so that's the whole story for that there are certain steps First of all, you have to generate an Unsplash key to use their service. So let's do that. So go to unsplash.com slash developers and create your account. If you don't have, I have an account. Then go to your app. You can see I have already created a couple of applications. Let's create another one, new application. Mm, just tick all four of these. Mm -mm, nice. Let's accept terms. We have to now just give it a name which is uh, band app um, description JavaScript app. Just give any random app name and so yeah, that's all. What do we need? We need basically this access key to get an image from this database. Now, if you go to documentation and see how you can use this, and let's see the second point. Uh, using that key which I have generated make request to a specific endpoint from our app so let's find the endpoint uh, go to documentation and to get an image uh, always follow documentation guys uh, go to authorization this user authentication what I need basically this endpoint okay so https api dot blah 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 and then this client id is equal to your access key okay so let's move to your javascript Mm, index.js let's create a function at the top nice uh, what should I say const api call okay now we will be using fetch api which is built in in javascript to request a resource from another app although I will recommend you to use axios for a larger application but in this case as this is a only fairly small application we can use fetch api so just don't get confused fetch and then here you need your endpoint so go to this endpoint just copy this I just put this in a const variable const URL that is cool mm -mm, nice now replace this your access key with your access key so go to your app mm, go to your app just find your app just get your access key which is this one just copy this nice go to your app and replace this nice now our endpoint is ready so put this endpoint here that's all now there is a better way to use your authentication key so you can pass and configure as an object here now we will put this client id in our header so headers it is another object and then this is key value property and the key is authorization and the value is just copy this paste this here and another little change which is just remove this equal and change the id to capital id and c to capital id and in case if you are worrying about from where it is coming uh, it's coming from documentation guys just read the documentation carefully and you will know what to use where so if i go to documentation and you can see um, authorization uh, look at this to authenticate request in this way pass your applications access key via http authorization header and it should be your key value property so that's what i used now this page call is an asynchronous request and what I mean by asynchronous request is it does not block the program flow instead it returns and promise which is an JavaScript object 
after it completed the operation so we can access this using then and i'll make a separate video about asynchronous request then basically it passed the result which is i can access this using res or whatever variable you want now i want this data to be converted into json so res.json and again this is an asynchronous request so i can access this that i can access the result using then and then let's say again res just log out the res for now and in case there is an error in our request in our call we can catch this using dot catch and it will pass an error object and just log out the error mm, okay so we have our url ready uh, we don't need this client id anymore we don't know this question mark question mark is for parameters we'll use that later okay so http api unsplash.com photos that's our url we have our authorization in our headers then we can access the result and then convert the result to a json and json res.json is another asynchronous request so we can access this using dot den and now call this api so api call as a starting of our program so let's see is there any error mm, we got an object and this object says oauth error the access token is invalid nice that is cool if i go to our docs Mm, unsplash documentation client id your access key oh it's not client underscore id it's client dash id let's see yeah look at this we got 10 result i mean basically 10 images and we and we have not asked for 10 images this is the default pagination of unsplash mm, and we get this information about the images okay fine but what we want we want basically one image and one specific image of let's say drum kit or band so let's try to understand that how can i use this go to documentation mm, so basically get a photo so go to the sidebar and find a suitable option which is get a photo and then look at this uh, we need to get a random photo okay so a random slash random will give me a single random photo and look at this option this is query so limit selection to photos matching a search term so we need this also so let's do this so we just need to add slash random here so in our url is a photo slash random and as this is a parameter you can see this this is a parameters we can use this using a using a question mark again if you use axios this is much more readable in axios so query which is our parameters name and then the search term right so in this case let's say drum nice look at this what we have if i go to our javascript nice and to get the link you will go to urls just use this as a global object so that we can access this so temp1 dot urls dot small ups small just go to this link look at this this is a band like a random band photo you can see a drum kit at the background so let's go to our steps uh, get an api key done use that key make a request to a specific endpoint from our app done extract the image url from the return data so so you need to basically extract this data in our javascript right so so let's create a variable which is uh, bar image url and here where we are console logging this data just and just wrap this with second bracket so that we can you know, perform more operations so console.log result we don't need this console.log okay so res dot how can i access that mm -hmm res dot urls dot small right okay and i will set it to image url and now we need to set this image as the background image of this container of this container so let's create another function 
let's say here const change background nice it will access and like image source mm -hmm. image source that is cool thank you my battery so first of all i need to access this container right so i can access this using class name so um, document dot get elements by class name I remember this is plural form elements so my class name is container and it will return me the arrays and as there is the only one element i can access this using uh, zeroth index and let's store this in um, container style nice okay so you got the element okay so container style dot style dot style object and then background okay nice hey you know what let's make this style just put this style here so dot style and in that case i don't need to use style here okay so container style dot background that's cool now set the url so url this is string interpolation and then inside a dollar the main url which is image source we got through the parameters nice so we got our change background function ready and just call it here change uh, uh, change background just pass the image url which is our source <laughs> url dollar just use parenthesis so this is css url right mm look at this if i go to our app just refresh this you can see another new image nice so our api call done let's design this background image so what do you want basically uh, a linear gradient background image with a lower opacity and then this background image okay so go to our change background image sorry change background function and here so first of all create a background color with lower opacity so if i go to our theme just make another value just copy this uh, let's name this background low uh, background low nice and it should be the same color with a lower opacity so rgba rgba 925 this is a equivalent of the hex value but in this case i want 0 0.8 uh, Eight, nice just copy this for theme 2 this should be theme 2 low just the name of the variable and in this case this is rgba this is quite optional guys you can use this you cannot it's up to you so 247 comma 195 and uh, and the blue is 64 and the alpha value let's make this 0. Uh, 8.5 nice okay so and now the way you change the variables in theme changing we just copy this and do the same for background low there is no variable named background low in our css uh, in our css mm -hmm. look at this i will create this later so background low theme one background underscore low ops and guys if you have not watched the last video please watch that because there i have shown you how you can use the css root variables using javascript so just copy this and just paste it here in this case it is theme 2 mm, theme 2 background row that is cool and let's move to our function which is change background but first of all go to your css and make another variable just copy this background row and the default value which is the blueish just copy this background low value rgba1 and just copy paste it here mm -mm, that is cool okay nice so now here you need to access the current background color of our app so let's do that uh, make a variable which is let bg color that is cool 
uh, you can get this using get computed style and then document dot document element and then to get the value you can use get property value and the variable name is just copy this so that there is no typo which is background low dash dash background low ah, okay good now we, we can use this bg color as a linear gradient value and now change the background up to this line so that we can access the background color okay in this case um, first of all use a linear gradient so so linear gradient uh, this is understanding interpolation if you don't know i want a 300 degree angle and my value is dollar which is a dynamic value which is bg color and then the second value is again the same color which is bg color our current background color and then our image so just use a comma that's all let's see look at this nice okay 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 just style the background image mm, what i want basically a container style dot background image ah oh, sorry dot background size ups background size is equal to cover then just copy this copy this paste it here background position is equal to center let's see look at this if i press change background there is nothing happening but if i refresh this look at this so let's implement the last step we will fire this function again when we click on this change background image so this is fairly simple we'll use an event listener first of all access the button mm, we can do this using this id which is util button background so mm -mm, uh, uh, const mm, bg changer background changer document uh, uh, document dot get element by id just what is my id util button background i got the id and then bg changer dot add event listener what kind of event click so this will fire and callback function whenever this click is happened and in this callback function what i want i want to call this api call again so it fires when this app loads and then it will fire when i click on this button so api call so that's why i created a function so api call that's all let's see if i go to our app if i click on change background look at this ah uh, nice so if i click on change theme oops there is a problem how uh, we can fix that problem using if I call this change background here when when I am changing the theme so just change change background and call it again here this box should be fixed so that's all for this video with this I have completed this project hope you are gaining some knowledge from these videos if you are interested in any other projects using react.js or vanilla javascript please leave a comment thank you bye